This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk a little bit more about XRP. I hope you all forgive me for doing this. I'm asking the question, is XRP actually better than Bitcoin? And you guys probably already know, know my answer to this, but I compiled a lot of material when I was making yesterday's video. And I think a lot of it's very valuable and I want to put it all in one place, which is why I'm making this follow-up video. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, I believe that XRP is an unregistered security that passes the Howey test in the US. It's quite clear when you look into it. I talked a little bit about that in yesterday's video, which I'll link to below. Further, XRP was marketed to and dumped on really unsophisticated investors. We can see this tweet here from Jack the Rippler, can't wait to be the first billionaire in my family, Brad. They really set up unrealistic expectations. And of course, Ripple is a US corporation. This is just not something that should be done. Not only is this morally reprehensible behavior, but Ripple and two executives are also being sued by the SEC for allegedly violating US securities law, as we talked about yesterday. But in this video, I want to ignore the SEC case for the moment and examine XRP on its own merits. One great reason to do this is that it helps to shine a light on what makes Bitcoin so different and so special. So if you want more on the SEC case, legal case against Ripple, you can check out yesterday's video, which I will link to in the description notes below. But in today's video, I wanna draw your attention to a number of different facets of XRP and Bitcoin. I'm gonna start with an exchange in the comment section from yesterday's video. This is from Max Entropy 7596 and it goes like this. Hey, you're supposed to be smarter than this video suggests. All the cryptos are securities by old world, world forced interpretations. That's actually not true. Bitcoin is clearly a commodity under US law. Ripple has built remarkable technology that effectively replaces what BTC and ETH have built. Performance and fees are markedly less with XRP transactions. Globalists have adopted Ripple-funded ISO and W3 standards. The SEC is a criminal operation. If you're going to provide leadership, then provide informed commentary. And my response is and was that Bitcoin is clearly different from the rest. It's a digital commodity, as I said, without an issuer. It also does not have a small group of people in charge like the Ripple execs who can make significant unilateral changes to the protocol, like moving to proof of stake as Ethereum did. Max Entropy replied to me, thanks, I do understand the nuance, but there are no laws, rules in the G20. Everything is up for grabs. The key today is technology, and Max Entropy here is making a very common mistake, thinking that it's everything is about technology. And, technolo and technology adoption, which means performance, blah, blah, blah. Corporations will not, will not adopt multiple products, services, providers, no one to hold responsible. And then here's the point that he makes that I wanted to highlight. Look at Ripple offices in eight countries and at least 10 offices and 500 to 600 technical and development staff. Now, of course, Ripple's paying for this through the token that they dumped on retail investors. He's actually making my point here about about uh, XRP being a security because this is a whole development operation that was funded by selling tokens. Uh, he goes on to say, Bitcoin and Ethereum cannot compete in this regard. That's actually a good thing if you can't compete in this regard because you don't wanna have an office that's funded by tokens. That is not how you end up being a commodity under US law. Standards and product support will be key requirements. And here's, his, here's my response to him, which I wanted to share with all of you if you do not see it in the comments. So he's saying basically Ripple has a lot more technical and development staff and developers than either Bitcoin or Ethereum. I'm not sure it's true for Ethereum, uh, but they certainly have a lot more developers working on, on Ripple and XRP than they do working on Bitcoin Core. So my response to him was, you are comparing apples and oranges. Microsoft and Apple have even more devs and offices, but they're centralized corporations just like Ripple. Bitcoin is a decentralized protocol that no small group of insiders, like the execs at Ripple, can control or change. Decentralization is important if you want your money to be neutral. And this is what ends up being even more important than the technology, having neutral decentralized money. And that is not just a technological problem. Of course, Satoshi solved the Byzantine generals problem and made all of this possible. But just thinking that you're gonna solve these problems with greater technology when you're actually running a software company like Ripple is, is not the way to end up with neutral money. And then I go on to say, if you don't care about decentralization, just stick to the US dollar because it's backed by nukes and men with guns that Apple or Ripple 
can never compete with. So that's the decentralization angle that I wanted to cover. Next, I wanted to move on to a reminder that the Ripple team is also pretty intellectually dishonest in my opinion. And this is going to be funny because this is probably going to be one of those few times in my life that I actually agree on something with Vitalik Buterin. When Vitalik thinks you're scammy, then you're really, really scammy. So here's an old tweet from December 2020 from Vitalik saying, looks like the Ripple XRP team is sinking to new levels of strangeness. They're claiming that their ship coin should not be called a security for public policy reasons, namely because Bitcoin and Ethereum are Chinese controlled. If you go to the World uh, WordPress link here, of course, the content's been removed by Ripple. But if we take a look at it, it's uh, basically saying this is from Ripple itself. XRP is a fully functional currency that offers a better alternative to Bitcoin. And it's better than Bitcoin and, and ETH because those two are Chinese controlled virtual currencies that the SEC has stated are not securities. Innovation in cryptocurrency industry will be fully ceded to China. The Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchains are highly susceptible to Chinese control because both are subject to simple majority rule. This is simply not true, especially back when Ethereum as well was, was under proof of work. This is just not true. And they're very smart technical people at Ripple. So they're basically being dishonest here. And they did, of course, delete this content. So that tells you or that gives you an indication of the moral uprightness of Ripple exec execs. I want to draw your attention to a couple more points about XRP. This was a great one from Matt O'Dell back from December of 2017. The biggest innovation out of the Ripple team was making the supply so freaking large that unit price seems cheap, even though XRP is the second most expensive by market cap. And this was, I think, a conscious marketing decision. I, I see this a lot in my comments, you know, Bitcoin trades for 19,000 or wherever it is now, and you can get Ripple for just uh, 30 cents or where, wherever it is now, but you have to actually look at the market cap. And if you look at the market cap, Ripple is actually a very mature uh, protocol in terms of having billions of dollars allocated to it. Uh, Matt O'Dell goes on to say, uh, this tricks all the stupid money into buying in. I agree with that. Litecoin used a similar concept, but Ripple took it to the extreme. So when you see Shiba Inu or any of these new coins, whatever comes in the next bull cycle priced in pennies, you can know what psychological game they are playing. And human beings are very fall fallible, and especially if they don't understand how market cap works and how pricing works, they might be tempted. In the same way that investors are tempted by penny stocks because they think they're cheap, they're just looking at the stock price. They don't understand that you have to look at the market cap and you have to look at things like price to sales, price to earnings, etc. So that's a great tweet from Matt O'Dell. And then he had another one about Ripple. I know what Ripple's value prop is. It's a semi-centralized blockchain that offers cheap, fast transactions and the ability for banks and governments to maintain control. I'm fine with that. Just call it what it is. Of course, Matt O'Dell's a Bitcoin maximalist and he's in no way recommending XRP in this tweet if you read the whole thread. I think that Matt makes a really important point here. And I'll ask you, I'll ask my audience, do you love CBDCs? Do you love central bank digital currencies? I think a lot has happened in this space since this tweet from 2017. And Matt O'Dell was actually quite prophetic, as he often is. CBDCs are spy coins, government surveillance coins that track all of your spending and can freeze your money in a very targeted way way if you don't hold the right views. Maybe you've had too many carbon emissions this month, and so you're not going to be able to buy meat at Whole Foods. You, you get the idea. You can also have very targeted taxation. You can freeze people's money much much in a much more easy manner than you can with the current digital dollar. This would be a central bank digital currency. So if you are the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, or the US government, you are definitely salivating for this kind of control. The CCP already has a CBDC for China. And guess what? Guess what? Of course, the Ripple guys are on this. They are trying to help global governments to build CBDCs, which are pure evil, have nothing to do with the cypherpunk ethos. So this gives you another insight into the character of these people, in my opinion. And I also believe that if you own XRP or you promote it in any way, you're actively helping to build your own and your children's and your grandchildren's 
digital prison through CBDCs. We must never allow these to take root in the U.S. because it will be very, very difficult to escape from them. Again, CBDCs are not a threat to Bitcoin. You'll still be able to buy Bitcoin peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. You'll be able to trade, for example, uh, I always get this question, uh, you get some CBDC dollars from the U.S. government, use it to buy a lawnmower, and then trade that lawnmower for Bitcoin. So. CBDCs are actually a very good way of persuading people that they're going to need to have some Bitcoin irregardless of price. But these Ripple guys, they're always on the, the wrong side of everything, in my opinion, and they're helping to work towards CBDCs. I don't think they're going to be successful, but I will link to both of these articles, this one from March of 2021, and this one from the Ripple website as well, and how they're helping central banks to launch CBDCs. Again, this is very early. I don't think it's going to happen. It's highly unlikely that the U.S. government which is itself suing Ripple for issuing unregistered securities, is about to become a customer anytime soon for their CBDC software. The CBD software will, will probably be built in-house, uh, especially if those two Ripple execs end up serving some time in jail, as I believe that they should. So the Ripple, if you're supporting Ripple, you're really on the wrong side of everything. Now some final questions about XRP's decentralization. Is XRP actually decentralized at all? Can the XRP ledger run without Ripple around? What happens if someone like a hostile government blows up all of Ripple's servers globally at all those different offices, all the different warehouses where they have servers? What happens if all of Ripple's nodes that they run go offline permanently? What does their consensus mechanism look like then? And I have this sneaking suspicion that only Ripple's nodes really matter on the XRP network and that everyone else stays in sync with their consensus and tries to behave so that they will be able to be continued to be granted these privileges. I have an un unlikely ally as well here. The BIS, Bank of International Settlements, seems to agree with me. I have to thank Dan McArdle for this tweet, Law Bank for International Settlements, accidentally throw shade at XRP saying, its network, I'll look down here, the, the XRP token also reacts less, we're talking about market volatility, which may reflect that its network of trusted nodes is centrally controlled by its issuer, Ripple. I'll read that again. Its network of trusted nodes, according to the BIS, is centrally controlled by its issuer, Ripple, making the XRP token distinct from other permissionless crypto currencies. And I think this is true. It's ironic that they're revealing this because, of course, Ripple and the execs go to Davos every year. They're really part of this, this crowd. So I don't think that the BIS uh, released this um, on purpose, but it is pretty funny that they are suggesting as well that the whole XRP network is centrally controlled by Ripple, which makes sense. I'll link to the BIS article here that talks about this so you can read about it in context if you choose to. Here's a thought experiment that's related. What happens if Ripple starts processing transactions for bad actors in Russia or North Korea? They get involved with the XRP network. Do you really believe that the US government cannot take action and shut it down? Seems very unlikely. Ripple, unlike Bitcoin, does indeed have a headquarters. It has a CEO, it has a CFO, etc. And that's why they were so easy for the SEC to sue. Just try suing Bitcoin. It's not going to happen because there are no headquarters, there are no execs, and there's no, uh, there's no CEO. Finally, a reminder for those of you who are new to this channel of why I make videos like this. In part, it's because, not just because these are scammers, in my opinion, but because Ripple does a lot of funding of very misleading Bitcoin FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which I talked about in yesterday's video. Bitcoin is nothing like XRP, and Ripple is constantly trying to muddy the waters. I came across this old tweet from Nick Carter that's pretty good, uh, where at the point where the government is teaming up with Ripple to create paid opposition research on Bitcoin mining, Here's an article on high energy usage by Bitcoin, and we can see that it was it was published and written with financial support from Ripple's University Blockchain Research Initiative. So when you buy Ripple, when you buy XRP, you are helping to fund you're helping to fund propaganda, propagandistic research that badmouths Bitcoin and just injects a lot of energy FUD into everything. And if, you, if you're worried about Bitcoin's energy usage, you need to check out all the videos I've made about it on my channel. You can just Google that. If you want to know more about the noxious influence of crypto money in the space, and I talk about the venture capital firm A16Z, I talk about the Ethereum Foundation, the Cardano Foundation, 
and Ripple as well in this video, which I'll link to in the description notes below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.